So, you've watched the last few episodes, you're pumped for Necromunda, you've bought all the stuff, or borrowed all the stuff, <laughs> and now you're here, you've got your models, and you need to build a gang. Mm. How? Well... Hello and welcome to Necromundown episode 5, I'm Joshua. And I'm Mitchell. And today we're talking about how to build your gang. The very basics of gang construction. Right. Sometimes it can be confusing. Yes. We, we've had some new people uh, join our, our campaigns and uh, they've been like, okay, well now what do I do? <laughs> yeah. So I've got four different types of gangers and I need some and what's good to give people? Yeah. So for today, we're just going to focus on very general guidelines. So this is not gang specific yet. Yet. This is the basics of building a gang these rules apply to essentially every single gang. Small exceptions, but yes. Uh, yeah, the basics do. Mm -hmm. the, even Venators, like who break all the rules, yeah. follow these rules. True. So the first thing to talk about is gang hierarchy. Because yep. that's a thing you see in keywords. I've got my House of Iron book here, which is my Orlock book. It's a thing you see, but what does that actually mean? Basically, you have five types of gang members. Mm -hmm. You have your leader, your champion, your gangers, your juves, and your prospects. Correct. Um, champions and leaders are your better, more powerful guys. Generally. In general, yeah. In general. Uh, they also have what's called the gang hierarchy, brackets champion, or gang hierarchy, brackets leader. Mm -hmm. Whereas your gangers, prospects, and juves have gang hierarchy fighter. Right. Or just gang fighter. Brackets prospect. Yeah. And there's a really easy equation for this. <laughs> Doing math. Leader plus champions must be less than or equal to gangers plus juves plus prospects. It's basically saying you can't have a gang that's too top heavy. Yeah, it's it's kind of going against the attempt to uh, cheat the system of, oh yeah, I started with six champions and... Yep. Uh, I fit them all in somehow, and um, I'm going to turbo stomp you. Right, because champions and leaders are better. Yes. They have better equipment to start. They better. have better equipment, period. Better stats. Better stats, better skills. Mm -hmm. uh, well, skills in general. Skills in general, you're right. So what this is, is you have to have more chaff than you do wheat. Yeah. You got to have more fodder than you do the big guys. Which would make sense in a gang warfare. Right, yeah. Because Not everybody's going to be super chad. Yeah. <laughs> you have too many big wigs that they're fighting amongst each other. Sure. So let's start with your leader. Yeah. You need a leader. Yes, 100% you are, required. You must have a leader. And every gang, with the exception of Kador, has believe, one leader to choose from. I believe you're correct. There is just one leader profile. Venators are also... Yeah, Venators are... They break everything. Yeah, they break a lot of everything. But you're, there's one leader, and you have to pick that leader. Mm -hmm. Outcasts also break everything because your leader can be basically anything you want in the whole game. Yeah, they don't have one profile, but you can still only have one. And right. Kind of thing. Your leader is um, probably your best fighter on the field. Not always, I have noticed. Uh, sometimes they just kind of sit in the back and do their own thing because they have mm -hmm. access to stuff that other people don't. Yes. Um, Delac in particular, I have noticed. Uh, they will do a lot of the, the support character. Um, but usually they're the most expensive guy on your board. And usually they're the best stats on the board. Yep. Um, which means they're going to be doing something nobody else can do. Right. Um, and you have to take advantage of that. Most gangs in Necromunda, your leader has to be in the thick of it. Yeah. And is in danger. It's not kind of like a lot of games where you have like a command model. Mm -hmm. It's usually pretty Sits rare. in the back and tells the tank to shoot better. Right. Yeah. No <laughs> Imperial Guard players here. <laughs> Sad. Yeah. So you have to have a leader. <clears throat> Inarguable. Correct. Next up is what you want to have maximize is your champions. Yep. Because your champions are your guys who have the biggest guns and the best stats, generally. Yeah. And you can take more of them than a leader. So you want to really uh, maximize on your, your threat saturation. Yes. Because if you have one leader, one champion, and everything else is chaff, it's easy to focus down. Yep. Kill the leader, kill the champion, you win. Yeah, basically. But you can't have too many champions, both because of cost, mm -hmm. and we'll get to that, mm -hmm. and the gang hierarchy rule. Right. You have to have more juves and knuckleheads mm -hmm. than you do <laughs> your awesome sauce. Correct. 
It's a knucklehead awesome sauce sandwich. <laughs> you can have more of the knuckleheads. The awesome sauce is the spice. Yeah. So most gangs have two champions to choose from. Right. Usually. I'm trying to think if there's any. Uh, dwarves don't. Yep, yep. Squats cool. don't. Um, I think. Well, and then some of the, the sub ones like um, Corpse Grounder cults don't. Gene Steeler cults don't, but they have two gangers. Or two leaders. Oh, and two leaders. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Gene Steeler cults are one of the ones that do have two leaders because yeah. you can choose either a psychic kind of support leader. That is one of the ones that breaks that mold. Mm-hmm. Or a fight, fighty, yeah. shooty, or punchy leader. Or all of the above. Um, but you, most gangs have two champions that you choose from. Mm-hmm. There's one that is just basically doesn't have a, a d- different model. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, for example, for Orlocks, it's the Road Sergeant. Yeah. And those generally come in the regular gang boxes, whereas the other champion, the alternate champion, uh, comes in a, a separate box, which would be the uh, Road Sergeant? No. Uh, the, uh, arms the Master. Sergeant. For arms Master, the um, Archaeotech. The Stimmer. The Stimmer, um, that kind of thing. Death they're, Maidens for Asher. Oh, yeah, they're champions. Uh, I forget what they're called for the lock. <laughs> Same. Oh, uh, no, that's the... Um, uh, the super killy melee ones. Squidbillies? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're called now. <laughs> it's called Squidbillies. No, it's the uh, Psy, not the Psy Geist. Uh, no, the Knocked Ghoul. Knocked Ghoul. That Noctgool. was it, yeah. Um, so generally, if you're just buying the one box gang, because yeah. you're just starting out and you took our advice, you're probably only going to have access to one of them. And that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Generally, the alternate champion is not better. It's just a different route. Right. They're more... F- generally, they're more focused. Yes. They, they take something that the champion would probably do good and they do great at it. Right. So the the stimmer is basically pure 100% melee in Goliath whereas the regular champion is can do melee well, can do ranged well, can mix up their stuff. Um their their skills are sometimes different, but yeah, the alternate champion is usually a more focused champion. That's a good way to put it. Uh and then we get to your gangers and your gangers are your bread and butter. Yes. Uh, they're your most basic guy. They're pretty decent. Mm-hmm. They often are leaning into whatever your gang is good at. Yeah. So your Escher gangers are fast and decent at melee and... Pretty annoying. Uh, <laughs> ranged. Your Vansar gangers are just shooty. Yep. Pinning guys so they don't get to you. Uh, Goliath is kind of the meat in front of your... I was going to say squishy, but not really squishy uh, <laughs> champions and leader. You're more important meat. Yeah, <laughs> you're more important meat. Um, so, yeah, they they are generally the... The you, baloney you, in front of the prime rib. <laughs> yeah, the, sure. I don't know what meal that is, but sure. <laughs> A disgusting sandwich. <laughs> uh, the, the weird thing about gangers is uh, they are a step down from champions, mm-hmm. um, but they have a weird thing with their experience. Yes. And we might want to save that for the end. Okay. Because we'll talk about why, what each one is. And the Necromon itself actually has a blurb where it talks about this. Yes. After your gangers, you have your most basic weak sucky unit, which mm. is your juve. Yep. Or some people call them juvies. Yeah, because, you know, British. Your child soldiers, uh, oh. as some people call them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't like that. No, <laughs> no. Uh, and they're terrible. Yeah. And they're cheap. Yep. They're cheap and terrible. They, they are somehow worse than gangers who are already chaff <laughs> yep your juves are your particularly chaff yeah uh in most gangs so for example um your leaders and champions will often be hitting on threes in their preferred uh weapon either melee or ballistic skill yep um sometimes both your gangers are usually hitting on fours mm-hmm. i think van Sar is the exception there where you're yeah I mean, where they have a three at ranged yep um i think even uh goliath gangers hit on fours i think you're or right. the me- melee uh your juves are usually hitting on fives yeah they're they're bad uh but they're cheap mm-hmm to put it into perspective for uh, my Orlock here, uh, an Orlock ganger, your basic uh, g- gunner, is 45 credits. Right. And for 45 credits, he's, he moves five inches. And Orlocks, I picked Orlocks because they're the all-arounders. Mm-hmm. He moves, he hits on fours, shoots on fours, strength three, toughness three, one wound. Yep. Uh, a juve, a greenhorn, is 35 credits, mm-hmm. so 10 credits cheaper, and hits in, on fives and both melee and shooting, uh, also has one wound. Yep. But, and this is something very important, your Jews are also, also almost always faster Yeah. by one inch of movement. And sometimes that's even faster than champions. Yes. They're generally just faster than other people. Yep, because they're lighter and younger, I guess. Yeah. Uh, the normal movement in Necromunda is five inches. Mm. Um, 
fast gangs are six inches. Slow gangs are four. Yeah. Uh, your Jews is generally going to move an inch faster. Yep. So that means what they are for is they are for getting to objectives and getting places mm -hmm. and doing things. Because they're not there to kill enemy models. Right. Because gangers are for that. Right. Now, you can get around their bad ballistics and weapon skill by giving them certain things that have good bonuses mm -hmm. or don't have to roll to hit. Yeah. But in general, your Jews are not there to kill. They're there to get shot. Yeah. They also generally have a... Uh less wide variety of weapons that they can pick, especially early. Um, some jubes will only be limited to, like, pistols and melee weapons. Very often they are. Yeah. Um, again, with, I think, the exception of Vansar, because I think Vansar jubes can get... Can get basic weapons. Can get, uh, like, their las... Yeah, las their gun. las guns. But usually it's pistols and melee. Mm -hmm. um, or a lot can get a son off shotgun, which basically should be a pistol. <laughs> yeah, basically. And then after your jubes, you also have your prospects. Mm -hmm. And prospects are the weird. They're also an alternate. So your prospects are going to be in the same kit as your alternate champion. Right. Uh, for Orlock, it's the Jetpack Wreckers. Mm -hmm. Really cool. Best unit in the game. Um, yeah. And their cost, uh, prospects are usually weird. Yeah. They're weird. They do something different that your gangers don't do. Right. So, for example, Vansar. Yeah. Vansar have uh, their Neotechs, which are, they're on Green Goblin Riders. Yep. Yep. Um, they, they glide around the board, they're speed seven compared to everybody else in the gang, which is speed four or five if you're a juve. Um, and they just kind of get in the way and they they get to objectives faster, mm -hmm. um, which Vansar can't really do. They do something that the rest of Vansar doesn't do. Right. Um, for Orlock, the prospects have jetpacks, which is kind of <laughs> the same thing. Similar. They're very, very speedy. They can jump over terrain. Mm -hmm. They're very fast. Um, for, uh... Uh, Deloc, their prospects are weird. They're kind of like weird psychers. Bad. Yeah. And this is the thing <laughs> is that prospects are not always good. Right. Sometimes they over-specialize. Um, general rule, uh, prospects for Goliath, Escher, and Deloc are not particularly great. No, not really. Uh, for Orlock and Vansar, they are spectacular. Mm -hmm. uh, so to this point, you almost always want them. Yeah. They're also spectacular for Ash Waste Nomads. That's true. Who are, to my knowledge, the only non-main house gang who has a prospect. I think you're right. Uh, you might have noticed we didn't mention Cawdor. Cawdor does not have prospects. Cawdor is special. Cawdor is special in a lot of ways. Uh, they, instead of having uh, one leader, two champions, one ganger, two tubes, uh, they have two of everything. So you have two choices for leader, two for champion, two for uh, gangers, two for tubes, but no prospects. And the gangers, uh, the, sorry, the champions aren't really more specialized like the other champions. Um, they just have access to different weapons. Like one will have <clears throat> a grenade launcher and the other one will have a flamethrower. But neither one can take, like the redemptionist side can't take a grenade, uh, sorry, a flamethrower and the blah, blah, blah. So it's, they are a strange one, mm -hmm. um, which is why we're. We're doing the general, everybody else has this. And we'll Cotter, get the Cotter's specifics different. when we get into the deep as <clears throat> gangs. Yeah. Because everyone has their own. So if you're picking up Cawdor... Bullcrap to deal with, yeah. honestly. This um, this previous part uh, doesn't... The prospect uh, at least doesn't matter to you. Uh, but when we get to Cawdor as a deep dive, um, I would tune into that. So that's your options. Leader, mm -hmm. one of two champions, gangers, Jews, and prospects. Mm -hmm. And you must have more gangers, Jews, and prospects than you have leaders and champions. Right. Now, another kink in the works mm -hmm. is that depending on your book you may or may not be limited to two champions and two champions alone at the at the beginning of your campaign yes yes at the beginning of your campaign yes but we are talking about starting building a list yeah um it is more rare now it is mm -hmm. uh it is mostly the side gangs so uh corpse grinder cults gene stealer cults venators I don't remember if Chaos Helots has it or not. Nobody does because nobody plays them. That's a good point. <clears throat> uh, but like all of the House of Gangs doesn't have that limit. Um, it's just it's mainly the weird ones because before the House of books, everyone was limited to that. Mm -hmm. And then when the House of books came out, it was like, oh, you don't have that limit as long as you have the gang, uh, gang hierarchy. Go for it. Which I think is important to think about if you're coming back to necromundo or maybe you have an old book you yep. might have something that tells you only two champs yep however i don't think that's a bad thing i think two champs is a great place to start for most games i agree so i guess let's also cover the advancement yes because it's something you alluded to um in campaign which is the best way to play necromunda 
yeah. link up there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you should play Necromon in campaign. Yeah. In campaign, part of the point is that your folks gain experience over time. And that experience is used to level up their skills. So mm-hmm. their stats, you can get, you can hit better, punch better, be cooler, yep. be top, smarter. Yeah. Put on shades. No one, ever, cool. no one ever picks smarter, but you could be. Uh, you can also pick new skills. Mm. The thing is, is that the campaign really wants you to try and put extra experience points on your Jews and your prospects. Right. Because uh, when gangers, your normal gangers, get experience points, you get six. And what happens is, is you immediately roll on a table and they get a random advancement. You don't yeah. get to pick. It could be a skill, mm-hmm. a random skill out of the billions of skills in Necromunda. So yeah. usually pretty bad. It could be a bonus to their stats. Mm-hmm. It could be a random level up. Yeah. But Jews mm-hmm. and Prospects have a special rule. Two special rules. One, when they level up, they get to pick what they want to put that experience into right which is what i was alluding to earlier is that they are lower than gangers on the hierarchy scale but they get to pick their skills and stuff when they level up unlike gangers yes so in the long run if you're playing a long enough campaign you want to have your experience points put into your juves and prospects because you can actually fine tune them to make them better Mm -hmm. than your gangers right necromunda itself has a blurb and i think it's the main rule book where it's your this the story of your gang is the story of your leaders, your champions, and your prospects and juice. Mm-hmm. Gangers are your background players. Yeah. Because champions also get to pick their skills. Same thing with your leader. Mm-hmm. So it's really about those folks. The last thing is that prospects and juice can evolve, level up and evolve. Yeah. Gangers can to an extent. Yes. Because there is there's a thing called a specialist. Yep. Uh, which is uh, at the beginning of your gang, when you get um, when you start your gang, you get one specialist. In general, this is the general rule. You get one specialist, which means they can take different weapons. It's a ganger that can take slightly better weapons. Right. Um, but as you gain experience as a ganger, uh, on that random chart, there is a chance to become a specialist. I believe you roll 2d6, yeah. and on double ones or double sixes, you can become a specialist. Yep. So a 2 and 36 chance. Yep. It happens. It does. Uh, but your jubes um, will often level up into ganger specialists. Mm-hmm. They skip the ganger part. Yep. So they level up into gangers who can pick the better weapons. Right. And your prospects almost always level up into champions. Right. And uh, recently added to the FAQ, they get to keep anything that they had. So if your prospect has a jetpack and they level up into a champion, your champion has, has a, a jetpack. Jet <laughs> which is the only way to get a champion with a jetpack. <clears throat> yep. If your uh, prospect has a green goblin glider, yep, then your champion has a green goblin glider. If you're a nomad player and your prospect has a bug rider, yep, your champion now has a bug. And uh, previously, it was if your uh, prospect leveled up, they just dropped whatever equipment that they had that made them a. Ju- uh, get, oh uh, no, I'm a I'm a I'm a arms master now. <laughs> I don't need this dang jump pack. Oh, it's for losers. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it is a big deal when a prospect levels up. Um, it is very rare. Uh, but if uh, your campaign is long enough or your juve is cool enough, um, it'll happen. Yep. I currently have a juve in our current campaign. Sorry, a prospect. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wrecker, Rosa Sharn Cassidy, has, I think, a total of 14 experience points. Wow. Through some absolute shenanigans involving <laughs> uh, kicking people in the head. Nice. <laughs> um, so she now is currently hitting better and is more dangerous than many of my gangers. Yep. Because she's leveled up a bunch and yep. she has a jetpack and they don't. Yeah. <laughs> Because jet again, best unit in the book. Because jetpacks are awesome. <clears throat> yeah. So you do want it. It can be tempting to look at juves and prospects as bad. Yeah. And to start, they are. Yeah. <laughs> but they, the the generalness of uh, the flushing out your gang and putting more bodies on the board, and the fact that they can choose how they want to specialize, other than rather than a ganger, um, makes them basically vital. Yes. And I guess let's get to that. Let's get to the very basics of how you're starting your list. Yeah. So in most campaigns, with the exception of one, yeah. you have a thousand credits to spend on people. Mm-hmm. Now we're not counting the 400 for vehicles right now. Yeah, we're, we're vehicles, different vehicles. stories. You have a thousand credits to spend on vehicles. Mm-hmm. Or on people. people. <laughs> Sorry. On people. You must have a leader. Yep. And you probably want at least two champions. Yeah. So some general guidelines. We're not going to give specific examples, mm. but here are some general rules. Number one, you want at least eight people. 
Seven if you're super elite. Seven is dangerously elite. Yeah. Even Van Sar often doesn't want to go into seven. Yeah. Because seven means that at the start of the game, the most people you can put on the board is seven people. Mm. The way bottle checks work, which is morale tests in Necromunda, is when a guy is on the ground seriously injured or out, mm -hmm. you roll a d6 and you add the number of people who are out. And if it's more than the number of people left on the board, you start, you bottle out. Yeah. If you only bring seven people, then the moment one guy goes down, even if he doesn't die, mm -hmm. you could start running away. Yeah. That's very bad. You want, at the very least, eight. And mm. honestly, you want to push for ten. You you want to try to get to ten. Ten is, ten is the sweet spot. Ten is the golden number yep. here. You you should eventually want to work to over ten, but ten, ten is the perfect starting ratio. Yes. If you can hit ten, which most gangs can, with the exception of maybe Vansar and Goliath. Yeah. Uh, and Enforcers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, Vansar and Goliath have a little trouble. Mm -hmm. For them, hit eight. Mm -hmm. Even Vansar players. It can be real tempting in Vansar to load your guys up with cool guns. Hit eight. I started with seven in my very first campaign, and it was a mistake. Yes. Because I had a guy die and two guys knocked out, and I started with four guys the next game. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. Go it, for at least eight. And it can be it. tempting. You can give them weapons later. Yes. Just wait. <laughs> Which is the next thing. Yeah. Um, boys before toys, I think, is the common yep. saying in Necromunda land. It is. Um, you should always focus on trying to get more bodies, even if their weaker bodies are generally better than, like, having two guys with 400 points of equipment on them. Yes. <clears throat> so, boys before toys is, is a good uh, rule to write down in your freaking, at the very beginning of your book. Just so you remember at all times. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's better to have more people for mm -hmm. a lot of reasons. Yeah. Uh, first off, activation number. If you mm -hmm. have far fewer people than your opponent, your opponent can wait to save their best stuff for last and go after you and you can't respond. Yep. That's bad. Um, having people to survive your inevitable deaths mm -hmm. is also bad. Yep. Having extra people in general. Something that should be mentioned uh, is the the rule about the having more uh, gangers, Jews, and prospects than champions and leaders is if the ratio ever becomes bad and you have less of the lower guys, you have to either hire a new one or get rid of one of your champions. So if you don't have the credits to hire a new guy immediately after that happens, you have to boot someone else off your team. Yeah. One of your good people. Yeah. So that that's why it's important, um, especially in some specific campaigns, um, like the one that we're doing now. Um, it's a direct burning. To, uh, to have an amount more rather than being focused on as even as possible. You could have four leaders and champions yeah. and four gangers, but the moment you lose one of those gangers mm -hmm. to a stray shot to the head, yeah. which happens, um, death you are is... You are forced to hire yes. a new um, underling. Yeah. And death is not super common in Necromunda, but it's no. more common than you think. Yeah. Um, gen especially if you start running out of credits and you can't pay the dock. Yeah. I've... The... the the Vansar guy that I said died recently, uh, it was because I didn't have any money. <laughs> the way death works in Necromunda is when your guy goes down, mm -hmm. gets taken out of action, your opponent rolls a uh, D66. Mm -hmm. On a 66, your guy just dies. Mm -hmm. Nothing can be done about it. That's pretty done. rare, but it yeah. happens. Yep. But it's pretty rare. What's far more common is that your opponent rolls 54, no, 61 to 65. Yep. Uh, and, your opponent, and you have to visit the doctor. You visit the doctor. First off, you have to pay the doctor. Mm -hmm. Can't pay the doctor, your guy dies. Yep, period. And then there's a chance that you do pay the doctor and he dies anyway. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's it happens. Mm. It's about a, a one in six chance. Yeah. Or no, a 10% chance because it's six uh, six numbers on the D66, right? So 11% chance-ish. Yeah, if you roll a six on the tens place. Yeah. It's a if there's, there's a chance for it to happen. So not uncommon. Yeah. Uh, so you need to keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. So let's say I keep that in mind. I've got a leader. Mm -hmm. I've got two champions. Gangers and Jews. Mm. Gangers, Jews, and prospects. This is the little tougher part. Because balancing those three things out depends a lot on your faction. Yeah. And what you're playing. So, for example, in Orlock, you almost never bring Greenhorns. Your yeah. Jews. Yep. Because Wreckers are 20 points more. But they're so much better yep. for 20 points. For 20 points, you get a jetpack and an extra point of ballistic skill. Yeah. 
uh, and on the opposite side of the spectrum, um, in Goliath, their uh, prospect is basically a more specialized juve, uh, but more specialized in that it has two weapon options, maybe three, mm -hmm. um, and they're all at least twice the cost of the actual body that's going on. So it can be very, very risky to put him on the board because he is no tougher than a ganger, sometimes less tough than a ganger. But he's carrying 200 points but he's, worth of crit. Yeah, he's carrying 200 points worth of melee weapons. Um, so if he goes down, it's a big go down. Yeah. <clears throat> so that depends. That's very faction specific. Yeah. Um, general rule is if you're playing Orlock, bring your prospects. Yep. If you're playing Van Sar, you probably want one or two prospects. Yeah. But then more juves. Yeah, because... They're one of the people who wants to bring both. Yeah, their their juves are not that much worse than their gangers, and they are decently cheap, and they, uh, like we mentioned earlier, they can use basic weapons. Um, so they get las guns. Yep. And las guns are great. Yep. Um, Goliath lead the juves at home. Yep. Uh... Delok are weird. Their juves are really, really bad. <clears throat> their juves are especially bad, and their uh, prospects are potentially even worse. <laughs> yes. So you, but you still want to just bring the juves because the prospects are worse. Yeah. Um, who are we missing? Cawdor doesn't have yeah. prospects, so you just bring juves. Yeah. Cawdor mm -hmm. wants to flood the board. Yeah. Their their thing. Uh, they have some sub faction stuff, but their thing is swarming. Mm -hmm. Um, especially for uh a, the particular uh loyalist faction um and so yeah you just want as many bodies as possible it doesn't matter how cheap they are how bad they are put bodies on the board yep uh squats only have jews they don't have prospects right um nomads are a very special case because their jews are or their prospects are bu the bug riders mm -hmm. which because they lack vehicles right they, is kind only of important. mobility but they're also 80 darn credits yeah they're expensive uh very expensive for what they are mm -hmm. so you do want lots of those but they're also a different case because you can spend the mounted credits on them. Yeah, that's so true. And we'll cover no later. About they're, they're very weird. Yeah. Um, so you want a mix of your juves and your prospects. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this. I think that you generally you want more juves and or prospects than you want gangers. I agree with that. Which can seem weird because gangers seem like they should be your bread and butter. Yeah. But they're not going to advance well. And they're generally more expensive. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of the middle ground, but... I don't think you need that middle ground. Not really. You want the uh, the leader and the champions to be your uh, hammer, mm -hmm. and you want the chaff to be your anvil. Mm -hmm. um, and if like it's an anvil and it's going to take the hit anyway, why does it got to be fifty points compared to thirty points? They carry slightly better <laughs> weapons, but yeah, eh. yeah. Uh, speaking of champions, the choice of champion. Yes, you probably want to. Mm. Um, and honestly, this depends on financials. Yeah, true. How much did you did did you buy the alternate box that has the prospects in it? Right. If you did not, just take two of the normal champions. Two regular ones, yep. Uh, if you did, I suggest one of each. Yeah, that's usually what I do. Yep. Uh, so in Orlock, one Arms, Arms Master and one Road Sergeant. Yep. Because you don't really want both to be the specialist kind, because then you're kind of lacking in whatever area. Like, again, if you take two stimmers... You're not going to have near as much ranged, ranged options as if you took one stimmer and one. You can choose to do that, though, and just really you go can. into melee. You can do whatever you want. Sure. <laughs> well, I mean, and you could have fun. Yeah. Um, it is very possible to build a Orlock list that is entirely Wreckers and Arms Masters and one leader. Yep. And it's pretty decent. Yeah. Because it, it really goes into aggressive short range. Mm -hmm. It's probably not as easy because you're sacrificing the long range firepower of the uh, Road Sergeant. Right. But you can do it. Um, which I guess brings us into uh, equipment. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned why Goliath prospects are bad. Yes. Because the equipment is worth more than the guy that's carrying it. Yep. And it's a real risk when you spend, you drop 200 credits on uh, a set of equipment for a guy that is toughness three and dies in one shot. <laughs> when you look at your starting list, you will see amazing looking weapons on that list. Yep. For your champions and your leader. You will look at your champion and see a heavy boulder. Yeah. If you're, you know, most shooting gangs. Or you'll see a, a thunder hammer. Or a plasma cannon. Or a plasma cannon. And you'll go, oh, I'm going to put a plasma cannon on my leader to start. And, and it's going to be, be awesome. amazing. And he will be amazing. And then he'll get shot. Yep. Because your opponent's <laughs> going to go, oh, that guy has a plasma cannon. Again, threat saturation. And because you brought a plasma cannon, which is worth 180 credits. I think so. Uh, your opponent has more people than you do. Mm -hmm. Plasma cannon's only going to take as many, you know, 
Well, I have, he could take out more than one because it's a freaking pie plate. But if he gets to activate, <laughs> if he gets to activate. <laughs> um, so to start with, mm -hmm. Necromunda is a game about building. Yep. Don't pick the shiny weapons to start. Yeah. Wait for later. You can always upgrade them later. The only the only downside with that is, uh, in general, fighters can only have three weapons. Yes. Um, fighters can only have three weapons, and you cannot replace them. <sighs> That is a very common house rule Yep. to change that. We don't play that way. We don't play that way because I I agree with the reason that it, it, it exists. I think it makes Necromunda more interesting when you can't change weapons at will. Yep. Because it it stops you from just throwing them aside yep. and picking the better weapon. I agree. Um, but just be aware <laughs> that it's a very common house rule, especially when you're just getting started. Yeah, because, it, it is easier. Yes, I will give that. Because if, oh, I picked a bad weapon. I got locked in. Yep. Um, that avoids that. But in general, mm. you want to give your guys weapons to start that are not super expensive. Right. So, but you do need some punch. Mm -hmm. So what are some punchy, what are some weapons that just general weapons? Because this can depend a lot on faction. Oh yeah, 100%. Kador especially have their own really kind of fun weapons. Their blunderbusses and their flamethrowers on sticks. Yeah, They're, they are especially special. It depends a lot on your faction and what's on your list. Mm. Because a lot of gangs will get discounts for the things that are good for them. Right. Like Vansara gets cheaper las guns and Escher gets even Escher cheaper gets las even guns. cheaper las guns for some reason. Sorry, I rolled my eyes a little too hard there. <laughs> Escher gets las guns for five, five credits. Yeah. For Escher, you put las guns on your gangers. Yeah. End of story. On everybody. Um everybody gets las guns. Orlock, for example, gets sh combat shotguns, which are amazing weapons. Yep. For fifty five credits. Mm -hmm. A combat shotgun is a great thing to They're put They're normally, on. what, 70? 80. 80. Oh. I think. Um, a combat shotgun is a great you weapon. You would think I know I have all shotguns. To put on your list. champions. <laughs> right. It might be 75, I forget. Either way, it's less expensive for Orlock. Yeah. <clears throat> so what defines a weapon with punch? Just to, as a brief at a glance. Um, in my opinion, it is a weapon that can hit at at least strength four. Or... Good AP or damage. Or both. Or preferably both, but those are usually very expensive. Yep. Because, uh, in general, uh, gangers start with three toughness. Mm -hmm. um, and if uh, you're above, if your strength is above the toughness of your target, uh, you're going to need threes to wound, or twos if you're more than, if you're double or more. Um, which means you're going to be wounding more often, damage is going to go through more often, they'll go down, take hits, blah, blah, blah. Um, so... T uh, strength four weapons is where I where I start at the punchy. Um, auto guns, most pistols, las guns, they're all strength three. They're fine for pinning guys, maybe picking a wound off here or there, but you need some stuff with some power. Yes, but not too much. Right. So because a las gun, uh, sorry, a las cannon probably overkill. <laughs> you'll you'll take one guy off the board, and then you won't survive the right the clap back. <laughs> Um, so some great starting weapons like that. Combat shotguns for people who can afford it. Yep. The bolter. Mm -hmm. Just the good old bolter. Yeah, the the straight up bolter. The only real downside is it has um, a really hard ammo check. So mm -hmm. if you get unlucky and roll uh, roll the ammo dice and uh, you need a six, which does suck. Um, but it is one of the better starting weapons. And it's a basic weapon for some reason. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only, what, 45 credits? The bolter? 55. 55 credits. Um, and it's strength four. And it's damage two, and, and it has AP one, and has rapid fire, so it can get a lot of high damage, high strength shots. Yep, awesome. Um, some other good, <clears throat> strong weapons to start that are not too expensive: mm -hmm. grenade launchers. Oh, grenade launchers, so good. I almost always put a grenade launcher on my ganger specialist. Correct. No matter what gang I'm playing. Yep. Because the grenade launcher is versatile because it comes with crack rounds, which are strength six, one AP, two damage. Two AP. Two AP. Very. So they hit hard. Mm -hmm. Um, but it also comes with frag rounds, which have a little template, so mm -hmm. they can hit things behind cover. Yep. They or multiple things. Hit things without having to aim. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also upgrade them later for smoke grenades, which are one of the best grenades in the game. Yep. Photon grenades, which are hilariously cheesy, but... <laughs> yeah, they are super customizable, in addition to being ridiculously good. <laughs> and they, uh, what I like about grenade launchers is they level up. Yeah. Because you can put more ammo types on them. Yeah. To Whereas, customize. if you take an auto gun, you're basically, you have an auto gun for the rest of the game. Uh, you could go to the black market, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, whereas a uh, a las gun is is one of the only basic exceptions. 
um, because there are upgrades that you can give, give to a las gun and then the grenade launcher mm -hmm. is you can customize it with a whole bunch of different weapon um, ammo types other shout outs uh, the plasma gun yes it's surprisingly a hundred points is still too cheap for it yes it's very good strength five mm -hmm. two AP two damage mm -hmm. no one AP. no one AP two damage yep uh, but you can overcharge it don't overcharge it overcharge it every time overcharging plasma weapons means that if you roll a ammo check you die you have a 50 percent chance to die you don't auto die it's not warhammer you die <laughs> uh but it goes up to strength seven ap two and three damage but it loses rapid fire it does lose rapid fire i prefer to keep the rapid fire honestly. yeah but strength seven though it, it is that does change the break point up to wound and three damage. anyway um we can argue about that for a little while, but yeah. <laughs> uh, the plasma gun in general, and again, because it has some options, is very good. It will it will take you to the late game, mm -hmm. um, while also being very like cheap enough to carry you in the early game. Yep. So I, I recommend a plasma gun if you have a ranged special, a uh, ranged damage dealer, so mm -hmm. a ranged champion or a ranged specialist. Grenade launchers and plasma guns. Yep. Are great places to start. They're fairly inexpensive. Uh, for your basic gangers, auto guns and las guns are the way to go. Yep. Although I will shout out the shotgun. Yeah, shotgun has been an interesting in in my in the most recent campaign that we've started. I'm taking almost entirely shotguns. Uh, I have two bolters, uh, one other random thing, and then like four shotguns. <laughs> and the strength of the shotgun depends a lot on the environment you're playing in. Yes, if you're playing Zone Mortalis or using lots of terrain like we suggest, yeah. shotguns are much better. Yeah, if you're playing fantastic. Ash Wastes. Don't bring a shotgun. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I understand the mistake that I'm making, but it's okay. But shotguns are strength four, AP zero, damage two to mm -hmm. start with on a basic weapon. Yeah. And they can get um, executioner ammo. Which is very good. Which is uh, strength four, two AP, two damage. Mm -hmm. Very good. So you can upgrade them later. Yep. And that's a basic weapon that most gangers can take. Mm -hmm. So shout out to the shotgun. Um, heavy weapons. I would generally avoid them. Most of the time, yeah, because two reasons. One, they're very expensive. Mm -hmm. The Heavy Bolter is an amazing piece of kit. It's also 160 dang credits. Yeah. Again, plasma cannon. And you can't... It takes a double action to shoot it mm -hmm. unless you have suspensers. Which are 60 credits. So now you're talking 220 credits. Yep. Avoid the heavy weapons to start. Yep. For um, you can get them later. You'll, you'll have the credits. Um, and it, especially if they're on your ganger list and you can just buy them whatever you want. Definitely get them later. Yes. Whereas the trading post makes it a little more difficult because if you get a good roll, then you... But, um, yeah, they're super expensive. Uh, and the problem that I was having with them is if you don't take a suspensor, if you get pinned, you can't shoot it. You stand up and then you don't know how to shoot anymore. If your opponent brings a heavy weapon and doesn't have suspensors, focus on pinning that guy every turn. Yep. Make him very angry. Yeah. <laughs> if Because if that 160-point weapon never fires a shot, and a las gun is going to get plus two to hit at short range. Uh, no, plus one to hit at eighteen inches. Plus one to hit at eighteen inches. The las gun doesn't have to wound him to pin him. Nope, just hit him. Yeah, <laughs> you just got to land a hit. Yeah. Um, close combat <clears throat> weapons. Uh, one of my favorites is I particularly like chain swords. Chain swords are great. They have plus one to hit. Yep, plus one to hit, which is good on basically anybody because mm -hmm. even Juves charging. Will hit on fours, mm -hmm. um, which is not bad when you have two attacks on the charge. Yep. Um, and they are uh, strength user. Yeah. So, so strength not three. great. Um, but they have AP one, mm -hmm. and they have uh, rending is the one that they have. And yeah, and parry. And parry, which means that your guys will survive longer in melee because parry lets you block other melee. Hits. And they're only uh, twenty five points. Twenty five credits. They are yeah points. Um, they are surprisingly cheap for the amount of stuff that you get, and yeah, chain swords all around. And uh, the good news about that is most people have chainswords laying around. Yeah, it's great <laughs> great to model. Uh, I would also like to shout out the uh, the good old flail. Oh, yeah, flails are great. Flails are great. Basically, any weapon that gives you plus one to hit is probably worth looking at. Yep, flails are great because they're also plus one to hit. Mm -hmm. uh, plus again, one. user strength plus one. Strength plus one. So they hit harder. No AP. Yeah. They also have entangle. Yeah, which is a fun rule. <laughs> which, yeah. Uh, it's if you hit with a six... Uh, your opponent gets minus two to hit you back. <laughs> very fun. Very yeah. fun. Um, but I'd also like to shout out the good old fighting knife. Yeah. Fighting knife, super cheap. Um, and uh, has, is that the one with backstab? Yes. Yeah. If you get into your opponent's back arc, you get plus one strength. Which if you're having Jews and you can get behind them, mm -hmm. like one person engages them to the front, the other person stabs them in the back. Yep. 
plus one hit. But knife also has one AP. Yep, yeah, one AP. So yeah, pretty decent. And that's only fifteen credits. Fifteen credits. Um, uh, there, there is a lot of surprisingly good cheap melee weapons um, to counteract some of the ridiculously expensive ranged weapons. Yes, and melee. Don't be uh, sur- don't be fooled. Mm. Melee is deadly in Necromunda. Yeah, because if you get someone down, you get someone out. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a later episode. Melee is not nearly as bad as people think it is. Right. Um, so that's the the weapons. Some mm. good weapons we've covered, hopefully. Pick between those. Uh, other Depends on faction, though, because certain oh, factions definitely. will have access to certain things that override these other rules. Yep. Escher, for example, you just bring last guns on your gangers because... Because yep. they're five points. They're five credits. Uh, nomads, you bring the long rifle. Because they're the only ones that can put it on a non-specialist. Yep. And they're special weapons and they're 30 credits. Yep. And they're strength for one AP. And ridiculously long range. Which, on your starting gangers, is amazingly yep. good. Yeah, super good. Uh, Corpse Grinder Colts has the boning sword. Yeah, that's kind of a special case. It is, where it's probably the single best melee weapon in the game for its credits. Yep. <laughs> uh, you're playing Corpse Grinder Colts, you bring as many boning swords as you possibly can yeah you can put boning swords on your champions and murder everything and be fine with that and save and get dudes and toys <laughs> yeah why boys not? and toys yeah uh so there uh can depending meat on cake and eat it too yeah and then there's uh squats who every single weapon is a special weapon that yep. only they can take and and just, all of them shoot more daca yeah better in every way they should just be orcs <laughs> <laughs> uh that's going so, the yeah, book the rest of <laughs> the the rest of that is um is basically dependent on your game. Yep. So um, now let's talk one last thing. Armor and equipment. Yeah. Armor your champions and your leader. Yep. I generally start with uh, mesh armor on my champion's leader, which is only 15 credits. So you have three armors Yep. To on your gang list, most people. You yep. have flak armor, which is 10 credits, mm-hmm. and gives you a six-up save. Yeah, a five up against anything with a blast radius. Yeah, so AoE templates or flamers. Yep. You have mesh armor, which is just a flat five up save. Mm-hmm. And then you have carapace armor, um, which is a four up save. Yep. Uh, yes, because yes. the heavy carapace is a three up, but only on the front arm. Most people don't have heavy carapace on their list. No, not really. Um, mm-hmm. Mesh is 15. Black mm-hmm. is 10. Carapace is 80. Yeah. Don't so start with carapace Plus armor. one save for quadruple the price <laughs> and also in the trading post at common rarity there's an item called the armored undersuit mm-hmm. which is 25 credits and gives you a plus one safe and can be stacked with any other armor yeah mesh armor plus an armored undersuit gives you a four up save for checks notes 40 credits <laughs> wait a second this isn't adding up <laughs> yeah exactly don't buy light carapace to start no heck it's it's difficult to justify buying carapace ever but carapace, carapace armor does stack with armored undersuit. Yeah, you can't eventually get that three up save. Yeah, but again, don't do it to start. But you're spending 105 credits for that. Well, oh, I did it. I did it on my gang. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> I have a three up armor save. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why that one got hit by the melting gun. He did because <laughs> it doesn't he care did. about your armor save. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I I would in general, um, it, with very few exceptions, I would uh, mesh armor on my champions and leader. Um, if you're, if you have access to it, um, armored undersuit is a decent start, probably just on your leader, unless your champions are very important. Maybe it's really, it's hard to justify that oh, that, that falls under yeah, toys for it me. does. That, that's fair. That's fair. But the, surviving is, is a thing. Yes. Um, and then I generally put flack on everybody else with small exceptions. Yes. Um, your juves can probably go without. Yeah. Cause if they die. Yeah. So I played Vansar and I put mesh on everybody. Vansar also starts with an armored undersuit. Yeah, so they just get plus one save always, and then mesh, everybody has a four-up save, and then I can upgrade later, which is great. Which is a great place to uh, start in the starting game when everyone's got zero AP. Yeah. And on the other side of that spectrum, I started with Cawdor. Uh, my my leader had mesh. My champions had flat because they didn't have access to mesh, and nobody else got armor. <laughs> not your job. Nope. Uh, <laughs> worth noting that you can't, unlike weapons, you can replace armor and equipment at will. Yeah. Well, technically, the way the, the update of this... You can replace it with something of a similar Yeah, type, some, something that is better than it. Which is very vague and open to arbitrator discretion. <laughs> yeah, so ask your ask your game master about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, however, do note that if your guy dies, you don't get the armor back. Yeah. It's implied that his the armor isn't in a usable condition anymore. I mean, it, it did fail. Because he died. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whereas you generally do get your weapons and stuff back. Yes. Um, and then finally, personal equipment. Yep. 
this is the one where very often you can leave these off. Yeah, it is very rare that I will start with personal equipment. Grenades on Juves are often not the worst idea. That's true. Because a, a Juve can chuck a template as good as anybody else. Yeah, well, <laughs> a little bit worse, but still. I mean, better chance of hitting. Um, if you're playing in specialized campaigns, so for example, Cinderac Burning where it's in the dark, mm -hmm. uh, photo goggles are great. Photo goggles are great in ash wastes where there's usually visibility issues. Yep. But generally, you can very often leave the grenades and other war gear behind. Yep, at least until later. At least, yeah, until later because uh they're they're expensive mm -hmm. they're just additional costs and you you know um photo goggles are 35 credits mm -hmm. that's the cost of another juve yep just get another guy yeah maybe that guy can't see but the other one can who knows yep and then finally if you have any exotic beasts or other status items those those are definitely toys yes leave those behind to start basically none of them are useful enough to have at the beginning of the game it can be fun to start with a cyber mastiff to watch your back if you're yeah. playing or sean but it's 100 credits don't do it yeah that's Three juves. Yeah. Just get more guys. Pretty much. All right. Um, so the mm. last thing that we didn't cover mm. is when you're building your gang, you also get to pick skills. Mm -hmm. And this is one that we're not going to cover much. Yeah. So sorry to, you know, uh, lead you on there. But the reason is because your skill choice is so gang dependent. Yeah. What I will say is that your skill choice should reinforce whatever role you have intended for that person. Right. So your leader gets a skill. Your two champions mm -hmm. get skills. Mm -hmm. That's it. Well, yes, you have two champions, but it's if you have more champions. Your champions each get a skill. Yeah. Um, they can pick it off of their primary list, or you can roll for it randomly. Don't roll for don't it randomly. Don't roll for it randomly. There's, Tony, there's so many skills in Necromunda. Most of them are bad. Don't ever roll for random skills. You do get to pick the tree. You do get to pick the tree. Most of them are bad. Don't ever roll for random skills. Correct. <laughs> um, so, for example, um, Orlock, very often they want to pick from the uh, ferocity tree because that's about being tough. Mm hmm uh, so you would pick something like Iron Stare, which yeah. is you can like look at somebody mm -hmm. and they have to make a cool check to shoot you. Yeah. You know, keeps you alive a little bit longer. Uh, if you're playing Vansar and you're, then you have access to the shooting skill, maybe pick the one that lets you ignore cover. Yeah. Uh, if you're playing to lock, pick Infiltrate. Mm -hmm. Once you pop up behind someone. Do sneaky stuff. Yeah. So generally pick what you have that in mind. Yeah. Strengthen something that you're already doing to make it better, especially at the beginning of your game, of your campaign, rather than trying to shore up a weakness. Yep. Some shout outs to some always good skills. Mm -hmm. Infiltrate. Yeah. There, it, there is no reason not to infiltrate. Um, <laughs> we hate it, but we have to call it Overseer. Yeah. Which lets you use your leader's activation to give someone else a second activation. Yeah. It turns your leader into a support bot. Yeah, which I is what I was saying I would actually heavily earlier. recommend avoiding that as a new player. Yeah, definitely. Because it means your leader, also your leader has to start near somebody to use it. So it makes him static. And it's a pretty, double action. It makes him predictable. Yeah. Um, let me see. There's Infiltrate. There's Overseer. Overwatch. Overwatch, which I is hate Overwatch. also in the Cunning Tree. Overwatch lets you burn your activation to shoot someone when they activate. Yep. Uh, and if you hit them, they stop their activation. Yep. Very powerful situation. Mm -hmm. Only good on a guy with a long range and yep. line of sight. Yep. Which means you can give it to someone with a long rifle or a bolter or something like that. Can to... change the game, but it also makes you very, like, it very much makes yeah. that guy. It, it stops them from having an activation, which is not, not a small deal. Um, but it also gets rid of one of your activations. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a trade-off. And yep. if you miss, you still use your activation and you didn't pin them. And they so... can just keep walking towards you and shooting you in the face. <clears throat> yeah. It is very, very strong when used correctly. Yes. Um, I think that's mostly it. There's also things like Savvy Trader. Yeah. Or fixer. The the outside the game the, skills. Uh, we'll call them economy skills. Sure. Uh, economy skills, credits are always good. Mm. I'm not going to say don't bring them to start. But very often, staying alive is better. Yeah. Taking something that will actually help you in the game early is probably the best option. Yeah. So I'd, I'd avoid those to start yeah. with. I agree. And I think that covers everything as far as the basics of building a list. I think so. Uh, obviously, when we do the actual deep dives into the factions, we will go more into starting lists for those factions. Yeah. Because it changes so much. That's one of the things we love about Necromunda. Yeah. Is playing Kador and playing Vansar is playing different games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is great. I love, love it. it. <laughs> Bam. Yep. <laughs> um, but for now, what are we talking about next time? Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, advancement. We touched on it a little bit in this video, um, how experience works, um, the kind of thing that you can uh, upgrade your uh, champions, leaders, blah, blah, blah with. 
um, and basically the directions that you can go with them. One of the most fun parts of Necromunda is watching your folks grow. Yeah. Watching your gang turn into something. Yeah. And advancement is the heart and soul of that. Mm -hmm. And there's tricks and tips for maximizing advancement. <laughs> Some house rules that we use that maybe, maybe we'll suggest. Yeah. Um, or maybe not. We'll leave it up to you. House rules are house rules. Yep. You have, you have the choice. You also have the choice to, if you liked what you saw, like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let us know if we're doing okay. If there's something you particularly like to see us cover, let us know down below and we yeah. might be able to cover it. If you're still here this far into the video, thank you. Thank um, you for watching. I, I wouldn't be here, but wow. <laughs> but I appreciate it. Wow. Well, I, I, I lived through the conversation, so I don't have to be here. This is fair. This is fair. <laughs> well, we thank you for being here. And until next time, I've been Josh. And I've been Mitchell.